Just as, a, as an example, I guess, that I'll give of how I think about things, um, let's talk about the levy, the levy situation. If, if you've lived in Genoa anywhere near as long as I have, maybe longer, right? Because um, I know, you know, when I talk to my parents about this, right, like, this has been going on in Genoa for a very long time. The way that we run levies in Genoa is we don't talk about levies, and then we need more money, and so we run, 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 levy until it passes. And often get to a point where we have to threaten, threaten, threaten to take stuff away until the levy passes, and then we don't talk about levies anymore. And I fundamentally think that's broken, right? I, I see both sides of this argument. I, it is absolutely true that it's ridiculous that we have less money as a district than we did from the state 15 years ago. Like, who... Who runs their life that way? Like nobody could survive like that if that was the reality, right? Or at least not districts. And I mean, that is 100% true, right? Buses are more expensive. Teacher labor is more expensive, right? And and you know, I, I haven't actually heard anybody say this, but something maybe it was on talk of or something, right? Where you, you hear you hear some people say things that I don't think they really mean, right? Like, well, I didn't get a raise, so the teachers don't deserve a raise. And I just I just think to myself like. If you don't get a raise in the culture in which you live in for three, four, five years, do you like your job? No, right? And if and if, is that the people you want teaching your kids? Is people that hate their job because they haven't been able to get a, you know? And again, but that doesn't. It also is true. We cannot financially fund the highest paid teachers across the state of Ohio. That's not the reality of our district, right? So we have to take a balanced approach. And the first thing that I think needs to change is the way we approach levies. We need to have more communication transparency with the voters about the status of levies, right? If you talk to Bill Nye, I agree with Tom, right? Like Bill Nye is a fantastic secretary that we have in Genoa. And, and he's unabashed as far, like if you ask him, he will be very clear with you. We're gonna do this levy that we just did a year ago, and five years from now, we're gonna need another one. If nothing changes, right? And, and look, I mean, I'm, Jake and I have talked about like, what can we do as far as the school supporting industry coming, right? I, as, a, as a school board member, I'm completely open to whatever the school can do to help get industry into the district. That will help, because that's how we start to offset the balance, right? But until that happens, if nothing changes, if nothing changes with the state funding, which really is all outside of our control, then in five years, to maintain the same standard of education, we have to get more money. So like, there's no way around that, right? So the question then becomes, do we or do we not? And I, the other change that I wanted to bring to the school board is I am, I am a steward of the people, right? I'm a representative of the people. If the people decide that they, right, as a steward, I say, hey, this is the standard of education that we want to bring. 
we want to be as tight with the budget as we possibly can. So, all right, I, I'm going to go into this assuming that that's the case, right? It's possible we can find some cost savings areas, but let's just assume for a second that we've done a really good job. And I think by and large we have, because I've talked to Bill, I think he does a good job as far as we're, we, we're tight as we can be. But if we want to maintain this level of um, education format, then five years from now, we've got to run another levy. And why not be telling people three years out, hey, it's three years away, two years out, hey, it's two years away, one year out, hey, next year, we've got to run a levy. It's not a surprise. We all know that, you know, right, and maybe, like what happened during COVID, where we get a bunch of extra money in, they can say, hey, guys, we thought it was going to be next year. We actually can push it out another year, right? If that, that type of, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that we're going to run more levies at some point to maintain that. And if and when the levy fails, because that's, sadly, that's the conditioning that the school board has conditioned. And it's not just the current school board, so I'm not attacking anybody personally, because it's been school board after school board since I was in high school, since my, you know, my parents growing up, right? Like that's how we've chosen to run it. And when it, when it doesn't pass, then the school board needs to make cuts. And nobody wants that, right? Like it, but I just, I struggle with, again, I'm not attacking Tom personally, but I, I struggle with this concept of like the education that our kids deserve. And like I, my, I have two kids in high school. I want them to have the best education possible. But the reality is, right, you, you, you have the things in your household, not that you deserve, but that you can afford. And we have the things in the school district, not that we deserve, but that we can afford. And if the, and if the citizens of Genoa School District decide to not extend funding, then we need to do the very best we can with what we have. And it can't be, well, we're just kidding. We're still going to fund things. We're not going to cut anything. And have that happen two or three times. And then, and then give you a list of a million dollars worth of cuts when we don't need a million dollars next year. So they're not going to cut everything. They're going to cut a couple things. They need to be specific. Say, hey, if we don't pass this levy, these are the three things that we will not fund next year. And then when it doesn't pass, we need to do that and say, look, you, you know, the citizens are deciding I am a steward of the people and I am managing the school district for the people. So I don't know, that was probably rambling. I didn't write anything down. <laughs> I, I would appreciate your vote um, uh, on, on November 7th um, so that I can go to the school board and apply that voice that I think is unique and different from what I've heard uh, on the school board so far. So thank you. from like a study perspective that can make it easier for kids to do AI. I think long term when they get to the job market, they're going to have to understand how to utilize AI to be more efficient for, and productive. Like uh, companies are going to demand that. But in the short term, if, if you know, like when a teacher asks somebody to write a paper, they're, they're probably going to have to have some like education or training to understand like how do we detect if this is AI generated or not, right? Which actually is not that difficult. Um, so you, know, you can actually put put the text into the AI and say, did you write this? And it'll say yes or no, and did or didn't, right? So like, not, we, like there's technology solutions to solve the technology problems, but I ultimately think so far it looks like it's a, it's a force for good, but there's going to be some, some middle ground. So. Did you want to talk about that? Sure. AI is coming. It's a fact of life, and it's advertised every day on TV. Children use grammar words. It's, it's, it's out there. You know, uh, 20 years ago, you know, you used, uh, you know, words, you know, spell check on, uh, on your word program. You now you use Grammarly. Now everything will take care of whether it's is properly cited. Um, AI is out there and it's coming. So how do we prepare our children to best use AI? Well, 
our kids right now start using tech um, when they're in uh, you know uh, elementary school. So they learn to uh, to code. Um, they uh, you know our our job as a school board is to best prepare our kids for the job market, not necessarily for uh, you know secondary education or college, but how do we prepare them to be citizens? You know, productive citizens, whether or not it's working in a factory, you know, he's going to be in a factory. Whether or not it's, it's uh, you know, going to school, to college, uh, we have to be able to prepare our children to use every tool that we can to prepare them for life after Genoa High School. Okay. Um, gentlemen in the back with a comment. Uh, what I would say about the school board is <clears throat> I very reluctantly voted for the levy because I am so pissed off at the school board, I can't see straight. It seems to me that they have the friends and family plan out there for who they hire, who they fire, and they've totally screwed up the superintendent's job. They got a good guy in there now, Mock, but Carrie Beeler was a phenomenal principal of the high school. I interacted with her all the time. We'd be out there picking up patients and doing this and that. Unbelievable person. She did not even get an interview to be the school superintendent. And she's down at Danbury living the good life. You wouldn't get her back in a heartbeat, you know? It's just, I cannot believe you guys out there. Unfortunately, that's the reality that we live in our school district. We can't afford to carry Bill. Danbury is rich. They have Marblehead, they've got Taba. Um, Danbury has more money than they know what to do with. She wanted that job, and, and she wanted it bad, and they wouldn't even give her an interview. We, a phenomenal resource like was, that. And I, I am so disgusted with that school board. I voted for the levy because you have to, but I really am more than disgusted by that school board. Carrie was so when you, when you go back in there, I might pay you a visit because it was crazy. <laughs> I would I would love to speak with you and uh, I'll tell you what, um, you know, I, I think that I don't know how long Danny's gonna be on the board. And or be the superintendent I should say. And as far as uh, a, a search for the uh, new superintendent, I don't know exactly what that process would would entail, but if there was community involvement, I would welcome that. I, I've just seen some of the decisions out there, and I just shake my head. You know, I mean, that, it's unbelievable the friends and family plan they got out there. <laughs> Give me a break. But I guess just, I guess coming from me, I, I, I wasn't involved in, um, you know, uh, Carrie getting an interview or not an interview. I would agree with you that if, if it's true that she didn't even get a chance to interview, I think that's unfortunate being a, a Genoa alumni and be working in a school. I think that's important. Um, you know, I, I have some experience with that as well, um, with my wife as well, but um, neither here nor there. I think, um, like I said, I, I love the opportunity to talk to you about concerns, <laughs> and anybody really, right? I, I'm open to talking about concerns. I have opinions of the, obviously things I just shared. But. Well, I'm only mouthing out for future reference, because you guys are not <laughs> <laughs> Well, there is, so there is a third candidate on the thing, so like, one of the three of us is not getting on, just, just for clarity. <laughs> right? so, I saw another hand right here. It's going to be our last question. We will have to move on. Okay. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I would be interested in knowing what each of you, um, your views are on book banning. On book banning. Book banning. Um, well, I guess that depends on, on the books. Um, I, I don't know if there is a, uh, a yes or no clear-cut answer to that. Um, you know, if, uh, if a book... I, I really how, how would who would be the arbitrator to say you said it, it would depend on the book who decides what books go and I which stay? That, that would be an issue for the state. Um, uh, there Not are, the school board. I believe that the, the state dictates the curriculum. Uh, I mean, yes, we can we can fine tune the curriculum. Um, if if you said that this book is. Uh, if this is, I don't know if you're referring to like a textbook or if you're referring to something that they might find in the library. Both. Um, 
Well, something that they might find in the library. The library books are very few now. Um, if you walk into the library, even college libraries, they're, they're scarce. They're few and far between. Everything is on the phone. Everything is on your computer. And I don't know how you can censor what people are going to look at on, the, on their computer as far as, as books go. It's hard enough to filter and prevent pornography and things like that on the computer. Um, as far as textbooks go, textbooks would, are, will definitely be uh, governed by state guidelines. Um, you know, and as far as what, if I'm, if I'm on the school board, let's say I'm sitting on the curriculum uh, committee, and we're trying to choose between book A and book B. Um, are we going to read every single page and look for um, something that's obscene? That's very difficult to do. So are we going to go with guidelines that are set by the state and recommendations recommendation by the state? I would say that would probably be the way we would go. As far as flat out censoring and uh, banning books, that's hard to do. So I guess you're saying that <clears throat> actually school board members don't have much say on what books are allowed and which books aren't. I, from my four years on the school board, nothing was ever brought before the board that said this book is inappropriate for our school system. Please remove it. Nothing yeah. was ever brought forward. Things have changed in the last few years. So. Um, if, if it has, um, you know, I would definitely listen to the public, you know, why do you think that this book is inappropriate for us? Um, and going forward, I, I think that that would probably be the best way to, to do it. Take, Let somebody else decide Well, what you can read. I would like to hear what you had to say, and I would like to talk to the county prosecutor and other legal counsel to say what our actual legal position is. Are we allowed to ban this book, or is it a freedom of speech issue? There are, there's more than one issue just whether or not opinion. So that's my position. Can I, can I Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, parents should have a right. So I think this too. Yeah. Their children. Their children. Mm -hmm. should they should have some yeah. say in mm -hmm. mm -hmm. their children are reading. Yeah, so I think my my opinion and um and I guess what in an effort for transparency, what I'll say is um I, I reserve the right to have the law smack me in the face and say you're not allowed to do something. But short of that, I absolutely believe that the, the importance of local control cannot be understated. And and I so I take that position as a representative of the people, you know, in the school board. And I and I think um, we we probably have a lot more choices than we give ourselves credit for. And and unfortunately. Um, you know, and again, I, I saw this. I saw this during COVID a little bit. You know, and again, I'm I'm not picking on every decision that was made during COVID or whatever. But but what I what I am saying is there was a lot of outsourcing responsibility to other entities when the people that actually were making the decision were sitting on the school board, and they needed to stand up and make a decision um, and represent the, the wishes of the people. And again, the, the problem I think is going to be you're going to have varied opinions. And so, you, so I think as representatives, we do need to take that into account. But, but I absolutely think that if we're, you know, if we're talking about, you know, textbooks in the library or just content in general that is put in front of our school children, parents' opinions on that matter in this school district should matter a lot. It really should matter a lot because that's what I would want as a parent. I want to be able to say, uh, and again, not, not that one parent gets to decide, but. Um, you know, if and when concerns are brought about content that's in the classroom, whatever form that finds itself in, the school board should absolutely be ready and willing to evaluate that and 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 make a decision that supports parents and represents the <coughs> district as a whole. Right? Again, it can't just be one person, but absolutely, we and and be willing to fight a reasonable legal battle if necessary. That's where I think I'm at. Right? If, and again, I don't. Depends on where we're at from a state perspective, but and what state or district or county that we live in, and how complicated that is. But um, we shouldn't always be afraid of the legal battle if that's what it takes. If we're representing what the wishes of the of the parents in this district want, I think that's important. Thank you. Thank you.
candidates running for Clay Township Trustee. Two candidates are running with one seat open. And I will ask Mitchell to come up and join us. I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight and uh, I appreciate the people that have shown up. Um, in case you don't know me, I'm Mitch Hoyles. Uh, I have lived here for 38 plus years and um, I'm married to a wonderful wife. She's sitting right there, Denise. And she's a lifelong resident and her sister is as well. Um, been married for 34 years. Um, we also have two children, Tyler and Mackenzie, and both of those uh, were born here, and both of them were raised in the Genoa schools, and I'm very proud of them. Very proud of the schools, too, because uh, my son has gone on to become a pharmacist, um, drug, drug dealer. <laughs> he says legal drug dealer. <laughs> and my... Uh, my daughter is a, has her bachelor's degree as a registered nurse and not practicing right now because I have a new grandson. So, uh, my first one, I'm getting older, it's the first one. I'm not spoiling my wife. Is. Um, I've worked as a funeral director, I'm sure most of you have seen me, I work as a funeral director with the Walker Funeral Homes. It's been Robinson and Brassi, it's been Robinson. Walker. It's been a lot of different names, but it's been here for ge several generations. And um, I can say that I've been here my whole career. Um, a lot of people change. I'm very pleased to have done everything I can to be here because I love Genoa. This is my hometown. Uh, I was born and raised away from here, but I've been here. This is my hometown. Um, the reason for me running for township trustee, I guess I would mention that I served a four-year term before, and I really enjoyed that because I felt we were doing something good for the community. You know, we talk about the village of Genoa, we talk about the school, but all of this is Clay Township. We're all in Clay Township, and yet the township has the smallest to do with everything that you have talked about tonight. Uh, the town, uh, the school. Uh, our re responsibilities as a township is to take care of the snow, to take care of the roads. There's about 40 miles of roads in the township that need to be mowed. Uh, when you add that up, that's over 80 miles. When you consider there's two sides to the road, okay, multiple. Uh, we take care of the drainage, okay. Uh, we take care of the trees that hang over the roads. Uh, you know, we try to do a lot of things that you don't see or have a problem with. But when you do have a problem, then you come to us and we try to help you out. So our scope is somewhat limited. Um, when I was, I have a feeling that the township should always focus on those things that it's tasked to do. When I was a trustee before, we owned uh, a small piece of property in the middle of Genline which we sold to Gemline because we're not stewards of property. <laughs> uh, we also uh, gave a, uh, sold to the <laughs> village of Genoa for a dollar the park. And we talk about the park. The park is fantastic. But the township owned, would you say, a third of the park at one time? So we said, look, the park needs to be developed. And we said, let's give that formally for a dollar to the village so that they can do that and they've done wonderful things with that. So it's been a real plus, okay? Um, I served two, two terms on the school board, so I know what funding is. I hired Bill Nye, who's our treasurer, and that was one of the best things I did there. I really like him and I totally agree with what you're saying about funding. Tried to do that, it's such a small thing. Um, I'm the past president of Genoa Kiwanis. I'm the past president of the Genoa Chamber. Um, I'm a past state officer with Ohio Funeral Directors Association and a current and past president and board member of the Northwest Ohio Funeral Directors Association. Um, I've spearheaded a lot of the different programs that we have at the funeral home. The Walker family, uh, Keith Walker, who is the owner, has asked, tasked 
with his employees to do things to better our own working environment so that we can do a better job for the people that we serve. Um, I continue my education every year uh, in order to keep my licenses and to keep my brain sharp to be able to do the best that I can for the people that I come in contact. People say, why do you want to be a Clay Township trustee? Well, I see the issues that we're facing, and the, the village is starting to uh, address some of those things with business coming to our community to develop. Our taxes are pretty high. It's very, very difficult uh, for people to maintain a home and stay here after, uh, after they retire. Okay, there's really no place, but they're looking at that. And I think it's the township's responsibility to help. We're, we're that entity that has all of it, so we should be helping everyone, okay? Um, business, we talk about business. I think the township should play a role in making sure that any business that comes to the area is what we want it to be. So many times, if you look at certain areas, you'll see where businesses have come in and it's been haphazard and then there's problems with that down the road and I don't think we can do that. I think we need to be proactive, not reactive. When you're proactive, you do better and that's what I think the township working with the village can do. Um, I think that one of the neat things that our township has done, and I think the village is looking into it, is uh, some of you may not know that we've supplemented our police budget for Clay Township. Uh, our police chief has been able to uh, acquire military hardware, non-lethal, uh, and then uh, hold it for a year all through the, the military, and then sell that equipment to put into the fund for the police. So when you're not, they're doing a good job in not trying to raise your taxes. They're doing a good job in trying to maintain and, and improve, but using that money instead of coming to you to ask. So there is some things that really help, okay? Uh, I think the trustees in the past, I think the current trustees, I think they're doing a well. Do, doing a good job. I think they're working hard at, at making things work. Some people, you know, it, it, you have to be it's like a police officer. You know, you're real warm and fuzzy until you're the one that gets pulled over. <laughs> and when that happens, you know, you have to kind of step back and say, I think it's our responsibility to say, okay, what, what can we do better? You know, how can we change that? And that's really what I want to do is I want to work with the village. I want to work with the schools. As you know, uh, you know, we security has become an issue. I think Genoa needs to be, uh, or the Clay Township needs to be responsive to that. I think the, the schools have done a good job. I think we can do better. Um, I think over the time period, helping we, you know, the. The, the limits of what the township does is limited by funding. We get money from the state, uh, the gas tax and things like that, that fund that. So we don't have that budget. What you're paying in taxes, if you look, will be for the cemetery, which I would say thank you. I think the guys are doing a well, mm -hmm. good job. Uh, and I see it every day. So uh, they're good about that. Uh, I think that it's, it's really, and, and the police department too, okay? I think that they do a good job with the money they get, although they're restricted. I think that limits the township in what they can do. But, in hand in hand with the village, we can make things better. Hopefully develop smart ways so that that money that comes in can help the school, can help take the burden off the taxpayer the, here, the homeowner. We've all known that the only way to take money in uh, is on your taxes, real estate taxes. Um, so we want to make good decisions because they're the ones that are going to bear fruit later on. I want it to be a great place. I want this to be a place where my kids want to live the rest of their lives. 
where their kids want to live, where their, their grandchildren want to live. And unless we work on that today, it's not going to be here. We can't be oblivious to what goes on around us. So I think that I want to move forward. I want to be a catalyst to make things work. I want to be a catalyst to make things succeed. Um, I, like I said, I love this community. I'm not going to leave. Uh, hopefully, there'll be some condominiums going up someday in the village or around the township that I can stay here. A lot of our supporters have had to leave the community because there's no smaller place. You either have a home or you don't have any place to go. So we want something that can be for like Denise and I, when we retired and decided to get rid of our house, which by the way is 4004 Windsor Court. So don't get it mixed up with. But that's what we want, is, is to make this a community better. We don't have the, the, the wherefore, and we don't have the, the money to do that like the village does, but we want to be part of that and working forward with that. So I think that's probably the best thing. I hope that kept it under five minutes. I tried. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any questions? Um, we'll let Michael go first. Okay. And then oh. oh, all right. Sorry. Absolutely. Thank you. Without further ado, we will have Michael Deakman. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for everybody attending tonight. Pretty good turnout. I'm Mike Deepman, I'm current Clay Township trustee. It's a little bit about me and my family. We lived on a family farm out in this road for 58 out of 67 of my years. I'm a 74 graduate, Genoa High School. I'm currently on the regional planning committee down in Ottawa County. Uh, I attend all the quarterly meetings we have in the township and the county and uh, every year we attend the, the Columbus Convention down there. I'm a member of the Ohio Farm Bureau, Elliston Trinity UCC and a lifetime member of Genoa FFA alumni. I farm, I uh, sell seed, bale a lot of hay, haul stuff down to Mount Hope area and bring back firewood so if you see me a load of wood you know who I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> For 43 years, the best choice I ever made was marrying my wife, Anna. She's a current retired teacher at Clay High School of 35 years. For 26 years, she was a part-time adjunct professor at Bowling Green State University. Now she's been with UT for six years. Guys, you know, a lot of stuff I do, so <laughs> my answers. We're blessed with three beautiful sons, uh, Jeremy and Stephanie, live out here in Camper Road. Have three kids that attend Genoa High School or Genoa Schools. Zach and Rebecca reside in Bellevue on a farm. They have three beautiful kids. My son Nathan is partner at Jordan Burke, uh, reside here in town. Uh, about the township, the job has something going on every day. There's a challenge brought up. We have to go out and check on stuff. Uh, currently, we're working on the bike trail connector out here at Martin Wilson Road. We just finished up paving uh, Middlesex and Marimore Drives uh, in the town of Martin. Uh, next year, we're going to pave Camper Road from General Clay Center all the way to 51. The township, and we're also blessed with some great employees. We want to talk about costs. We bought a new dump truck two years ago by our snowplow. It was 123000 We got a current bid the other night of 240000 and that's a year out. And so it's, it's, it's hard to make things work all the time. Uh, I just, you know, you guys elected me this job and I've tried to do the best I can. A lot of people have gone after me and, and tried to uh, 
chop me down because I've stepped on some toes. And a lot of stuff, I, you know, I ain't out there say, taking an attaboy for everything, but we had a couple people in the community that was on boards around here and uh, abused a credit card and nobody would go after him. And it was on the fire board. And I'm ashamed to say it, the present board or the past board wouldn't do anything about it, and the present board didn't want to do anything about it. So people come to me and say, hey, what do we do? And you write a letter down to Columbus and you say, hey, you know, come look at this. They come back and said, you know, he was responsible for paying back $5,000 to the township, to the fire department. It's not something you want to do every day, but it's part of doing it. And yeah, I, I, I'm sure I made some people upset, but it's part of life. Mm -hmm. And like I said, my phone's always on, my door's always open, and if you can't find me any other way, come up to McDonald's in the morning at 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say, and I appreciate your vote working for you another four years. Thank you. I see a lot of new homes being growing up out in the country around Genoa. How involved in that is the Clay Township? Do they have to help them get their uh, official papers or whatever they need? The water lines, everything that goes in with well, building. Anything that goes out in the township with the exception of the area where the, the main water lines are. For instance, they come down to Genoa Clay Center Road are probably on a well to start out, oh, okay? I see. And then there are, um, there's no sewer, okay? Uh, there is a force line down General Clay Center Road mm -hmm. and Alp 51 along with Water 2. And those uh, would have to be, uh, anything other than that, if they didn't tie into that, would have to be a, a leach bed, leach field, okay? So most of that is governed, uh, the township turns most of that over to the Ottawa County Board of Health. Oh, I see. And they have regulations regarding that. They have a lot of inspections and stuff. Um, but uh, there's been some changes down there, so it's been a little easier for people to build, and I think you've seen the results of that. A lot of building. Yeah. Thank Just the first place you go to when you come to us is we send you down to the health department. Starts right there. They look at your lot, look at your dimensions, what size house you're going to build. They tell you what size septic system you got to have. Basically, if you put a driveway in where you got to put it, you know, all your drainage, stuff like that. 90% of the work is done through the county. The only thing we do is issue a permit then to, for if you meet them obligations, to go ahead and build. And it's, it's uh, other than the drainage, drainage in the sewer is the, is the biggest problem. We've got certain areas over off of 51 where there's no build because of the septic and that. But uh, everything is done basically through the county down there. We had an issue with rock table. It was hot. <laughs> oh, yeah. as, as anyone's, you know, if you see, if you go out on 163, you'll see where the gas line is going under 163. That's, it's so slow, it's because that's solid rock. So they're trying to get underneath that. Um, we do have our own zoning, okay, uh, at the in the township, and the zoning officer is one of the police officers. So they get around, which is a which is a plus, because he kind of covers two things. You know, when the police are around a lot, they catch things that need to be caught, okay. Uh, and they just did some uh, updating on the zoning. Uh, it's not complete yet. Uh, but like solar fields and things like that mm -hmm. uh, in order to, again, get ahead of it before it becomes an issue that can't be rec uh, rectified. So hopefully that will continue. The, 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 the zoning needs to always be looked at. It's a continuing and an ongoing thing. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.
opportunity to thank you all so much for coming. What a crowd. I mean, this place is packed, which is really, really great. We want all of you to be super informed. So before you head out, feel free to take anything from the table. And um, again, thank you, and I wish all of our candidates best of luck on Election Day. Thank you.